we're deep in the snow country here. We're on our way to go interview Fred Dunn. The trouble is, we're lost in the middle of nowhere. Fred said, he warned us, he said, watch out for those short-tailed shrews. Those short-tailed shrews. Sign says, I'd turn back if I were you. What this eerie feeling, son. I feel like I'm being followed. You ever have that feeling? There they sit, having their appendages removed piece by piece by the hungry shrew. The North American short-tailed shrew. That is correct. It is the largest shrew in North America, found right here in the great state of Pennsylvania, the Keystone State. All points east and north of here must pass through the state of Pennsylvania. How does it feel, Fred, to be uh, the morning after the day of the shrew attack? The day after the shrew attack, uh, I'm doing okay. Get a good night's sleep. I called a therapist who could help me with small mammal biology nightmare issues. And uh, I'm all right now. Um, Thank you for asking, by the way. It, it's, yeah. uh, it's truly an honor to hear to sit with uh, a shrew survivor. Uh, what do you attribute most of your survival success to? This episode is brought to you by Nature's Image Farm. If you're interested in nukes, packages, queens, or supplies, visit us on the web at naturesimagefarm.com. So, back to the shrew story. Even though it's very difficult for me to continue to talk about such a traumatic Take your event. Time. Uh, camera guy, a uh, box of Kleenex. Box of Kleenex, Take just in time. case. Um, it is kind of, you know, I didn't know what was going on. I was uh, taking care of my bees, protecting them from blocking their entrances. I was demonstrating a special tool, which as it turns out, it was really good that I had that with me. And the tool that we're talking about, that later when I was fatigued, shrews are very capable of reading a large mammal like a human and knowing that when we're in a weakened state, which gives them an advantage, especially when they're moving under deep snow. And I was wearing insulated boots, but I felt something digging into the boot when I fell into the deep snow mm. and really couldn't get away. Normally you would just run or wear snowshoes, which keeps your feet out of the snow and away from shrew range. Mm. But when I got down into the snow, and I'm sorry, I have to be so graphic you know, okay. right now, okay. but this is the tool I had with me. <sighs> now this, oh, thank goodness, wow. is from Be Smart Designs, and it's a hive tool for cleaning out dead bees. But when I got in the deep snow, this also has a snow clearing edge right there did you want to touch it I, I, is it is it sharp you can touch it yeah all right don't hurt yourself yeah. anyway so i was able to use this to dig out the snow around me which allowed me again to get up but then the most important part because i realized i was dehydrated oh. if you've ever been dehydrated you can hallucinate i mean we're good for about seven days if we're surviving if okay. we're completely hydrated at the beginning of it but and see, these temperatures the temperatures, single digits, which you yourself experienced today. But anyway, I was able to use this part of the Be Smart Designs hive tool and uh, scoop up snow, not yellow snow. Not yellow snow. And then this gives you the hydration you need to recover, both physically and it gives you the fortitude, the intellectual fortitude to rise from the depths of the snow oh, wow. and then run off into the countryside faster than a Shuka tunnel. That's the story. And I'm here today to tell you about it because of this tool. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Thanks for opening up and sharing that. That um, It looks like that is a very multi. On the farm, everything has to have more than one function. You know, yeah, two is would, one, one is none. And I would like me. to point out, this is not a spaghetti measuring I was going to ask. Somebody did ask okay. about that. It is not. Is, is that or is that not also a fantastic shoehorn for shrew boots? I've not seen the shrew boots okay. because they don't like to have their feet touched. I don't know if you've ever tried to trim the toenails on an angry dog, let's say. Mm. Uh, shrew feet are very sensitive, and you're in range of their venomous little mouth That's if right. you do that. So I can't attest to that, but I hear you know, from those who survived it that that can work. We had a very close encounter. You gave us a fair warning. 
uh, we were lost, we were followed, we it was very eerie, um, but uh, it's it's humbling and, and it's an honor to be here with you, Fred. Yeah. Thanks for opening up and sharing that very sensitive If story. I could say one more thing. Please. Most people don't realize that shrews communicate uh, with high frequency clicks, uh, much like uh, some aquatic mammals do. Echolocation, we know that bats can do it too. It's above 20,000 cycles per second, which is beyond the range of human hearing. And uh, they summon other shrews. And then they, it's called a shrew pack. And so they travel through the tunnels made by other mice, voles, moles, things like that. And that clicking sound that they make helps them find their way in total darkness. The things a northern beekeeper has to deal with um, is just, you know, guys like Cayman Reynolds and Bob Benny, they didn't have no idea that the struggle was this real when you have this many feet of snow uh, and the, the constant danger of shrews burrowing underneath mm -hmm. and, and taking you out by mm -hmm. the ankles. That's, it, it's a real thing. Yeah, keep your head on a swivel. Beekeeping does not stop in the summertime around here, does it? That is correct. You have to take care of those bees. They depend on you in winter. And if you can't get out there to deal with the bees, then what you have in spring is your own fault. Or down half. Way to be, friend. So, thank you, Greg. <laughs> we could just do two hours of that. Dude, you're keeping a good straight face. Dude, this is good. I like it. All right.